Right, let's kick this thing off with wedges. We'll start at the short end of the bag and we'll work our way up to driver. And I think with all these clubs, there's some questions you've got to ask yourself as to whether or not these are the types that you would put in the bag. And I think you almost need a tick list. Recognise what are the strengths and weaknesses within your game and then identify what you're looking for from each of these clubs. So for wedges for me, I've certainly learned over this last year, perhaps two years, that looking at kind of like the likes of the Vokey is a typical example of what I class as a bladed wedge. I haven't got a strong enough short game, I haven't got enough confidence in my short game to play that Vokey style of wedge. So I've gone to the more bigger game improvement style wedges. That's on a personal level. So I'm gonna kick things off with what I think is the best out there right now and that's the Mizuno ES21 wedge. Now, there is a little bit of an issue with these wedges, and I'll start with that first of all, is they only come in limited lofts. I think it's from 54 to 62. So they're more of a specialist wedge. So you are gonna look at others in gapping from wherever you go from pitching wedge up. But why would I choose this ES21? Well, there's a few reasons. The first thing to say is visually, I think these look stunning. They're in this black finish. It's really eye-catching, but they've done a really clever job of disguising just how much bulk and mass is built, built into this club head by sort of hiding that backside of it. Chamfered real drop off in sort of that top line to that back end. You don't see any of the bulk and mass in what is, like I said, quite a hefty uh, bit of club behind the ball, certainly for wedges, but having tested them, you can do so much with them in terms of the ability to open the club face up. You can play a, an absolute variety of shots. The ball again, or the club rather, just slide, or seems to slide under the ball um, with this sort of wider sole unit, which again is something I'm a big fan of. So for me, they just tick every box, barring the loft that they're available in, and one other big deal is the price. So there's gotta be an option two in this category. Right, well, for those of you who watch the channel, this will come as no great surprise either, because it's the Cleveland CBX2, which is the other option, and it's the other option based on price. It's cheaper than the uh, ES21, and there's a bit more availability in terms of loft options. But the principle is exactly the same. It's that wide sole unit, which I think is fantastic, helps so many uh, average golfers, I feel, in uh, improving their short game. Um, but again, the bulk and mass behind the club just makes it a game improvement wedge. That's what I class it as. And uh, it's helped me no end in terms of getting my confidence up, in terms of playing all types of shots around the green. And I can't speak highly enough of these two wedges. They're superb. And it's a great way to start your most forgiving golf bag that you could possibly put together right now. So let's just explain. I've brought in the... Um, you brought in the tea... Well, you said tea cakes, but they're actually hot craft buns. There's a big difference. Yeah, and assuming you'd have a toaster in this facility, and instead we we're using what? We don't have a toaster because of mess. So we're using a heat gun. Look at, look at this. Mate, that's genius. Do you know what's good about it? It's Even. the most evenly... Unbelievable. Isn't it? I think we've started something. Now decided to... Um, it's actually got harder in here because it's so cold. That'll, that'll do, that'll do. Oh my God. Tell me we haven't got a knife. What kind of facility is this? There you have it. Well done, Jim. To be honest with you, mate, that's better than your golf. It is. Brilliant, Jim. And next up, it is irons. And I think, as with that shot there, these things absolutely fire out. Whenever I've tried them, and again, point to mention, I've done a full review on all the products that you're gonna see in this video. So if you want a bit more detail about the product, a bit more uh, in depth, then by all means go and check out the previous videos. But the next up, it is the Callaway Big Bertha irons from this year. And I've gotta say they're kinda, of... this video stemmed from my brother-in-law asked me over the weekend 
If I was buying irons, which would I suggest are the best suited to him? 16 handicapper, and I sort of asked him a few questions what he's looking for. And ultimately what he is, he's a golfer that comes, plays maybe once, twice a month. Um, and he wants to pick up a set of clubs that'll give him that little bit of help that I mentioned earlier on in the video. And I thought of a few different options, but ultimately you can't go wrong with these irons because he again asked him what he was interested in, the sort of the thicker top line, as he said, as, as he said to me, was confidence inspiring. The bigger mass was confidence inspiring because that's what these are. They're fairly bulky, they're chunky. There's everything you'd expect from a super in-game game improvement iron. But at the end of the day, it just does not get any easier. And in fact, the conversation ended when I said to him, do you know what? The question I asked myself is why aren't I using a set of irons like this? And honestly, it's like literally bang up in the air, plenty of distance, no doubt these things are strong lofted, but they're plenty of fun. I've already spoke, I don't want to repeat the idea of what is forgiving, but all I can say is I've hit so many balls with these clubs and you just do not seem to be able to hit a bad shot with them. That's got to be a positive. So they're in the bag as the most forgiving irons of 2020. Now I said next up fairways, but we're actually going to put in a couple of hybrids. And uh, I say a couple of hybrids because one of the other interesting things for me is how you put your bag together is really interesting. What I didn't mention in the irons was because of the strength of loft with the, um, with the big Bertha irons, you're probably only going to go up to maybe a six iron, five iron uh, at best. I don't think many of you will put a four iron in the bag. So that's where looking at hybrids as being the sort of next longer club in the bag is really interesting and I would choose this one. Oh. Decent ball, decent ball flight, does everything you want it to do as a hybrid. It's the CLK from Mizuno and again some of this obviously lends itself to personal opinion but I really like the look of these um, first and foremost and again I'm always drawn to the way a product looks first of all then obviously you want it to perform as good as it looks and the CLK definitely does that. It's this grey titanium type of dark finish if you like. Um, sits nice and addressed and again the overall profile of the hybrid, some at the moment are becoming a little bit odd in the shape in the back end is a little bit odd. It throws me off greatly in sort of my aim and direction but this sits fairly neutral. You know you've got that bulk and mass, you know you've got the confidence that any hybrid would give you but it launches high again what you'd expect from any hybrid but for me it's more about that neutral position that it sits at a dress and the sort of traditional shape of a hybrid that I would be comfortable with and the ball flight and where it gets to there's a bit of a rush swing and that thing is absolutely launched and that's why the CLK from Mizuno would be the one for me maybe with hybrids I'd say there's a slight caveat and that they're almost all forgiving, but for me, this has just got that neutral setup and makes it more playable for more average golfers with all the different faults that we have in our swing and our ball flights. And before we go any further, one thing I want to mention is this video was inspired by uh, James Robinson. So thanks to James for producing uh, a similar video, uh, identical video, just a matter of days ago. And uh, that inspiration was fantastic. I was inspired by the amount of views you got. And uh, inspiration is another word for I copied him. Anyway, if you do like the content that you see in this video, then please consider hitting that subscribe button and uh, maybe also that like, it would be greatly appreciated. Now we are into them fairway woods that I talked about. And yet again, just to carry on from the hybrids, I think what is really important when you're putting your bag together is just making sure you get that gapping element right. So go to the longest iron that you're most comfortable with in terms of your own swing, your own capabilities. Then it's into the hybrids again to gap that uh, longer end of the bag. And then again, how you choose to switch from a hybrid or whether indeed you need to, to go from a fairway wood before we get into driver. So for me, the three wood that I put in the bag is, it's one of the max products and everybody seems to have a max product in their bag. But I think what this does again, first of all, it's an incredibly good looking fairway wood. I think, it's different than any other club that's out there in terms of how it looks, certainly from that top side. 
I love the way, again, the way this thing frames the ball. But I love the sort of slightly elongated head that CG is placed way back. And for me, with a three wood or five wood forward, whatever it is you choose to do, in average golfers, when we're looking for forgiveness, what we're also looking for is masses of help in terms of launch. It's very difficult to hit 15 degree, 16 degree clubs and get a, an easy to launch club. Um, and this does it incredibly well. And that's why I've chosen That is an unreal three wood. I really do like this club and it's something that uh, it is the tailor-made Sim Mac. It would be for me in terms of its size because it's almost size like the mini driver in terms of its shape and profile. It's big on the size of uh, what I would accept as a three wood. But for me, it's confidence inspiring. Um, that top line is sort of almost like Formula One checkered flag. I think they've done it really, really well. It's quite a unique design. The thin muted grey line again frames everything really well but the big deal like I said is the launch angle, the CG way back in the max, uh, the return of V-Steel in terms of the sole, it just seems to pick the ball up incredibly well off the fairway. I think three woods off a tier again or pretty much of a muchness, I think when you're trying to get the ball picked up with a tight lie off the fairway then for me that's where you need help in being able to get the thing up and airborne and this does it incredibly well. Oh my word, real good performer for me this year, that Sim Max, incredibly good three wood and that's why three wood, four wood, five wood, whatever it may be, this range from Taylor Made would be what I would consider the most forgiving in 2020 and I just throw in as a backdrop on that one, the Callaway Maverick Max are also incredibly forgiving. And the most forgiving driver of 2020 would be a close call because to be honest with you, I think what's happened is we've all recognised that in terms of distance, most manufacturers we think are pretty much maxed out in terms, of, uh, in terms of where they're allowed to go. So there's been a big concentration on what they call forgiveness, MOI. And I've said throughout the video how you measure that, I'll uh, never quite uh, know, I don't suppose, in terms of how we get that across to you, sort of what is the proof? The fact is, you ain't going to get none. All I can give you is my opinion that there's been a huge improvement in terms of um, forgiveness in that we've seen club faces accept poorer performance in terms of where we hit across the club face. So the number of positions that I find, which is probably like you, not always out the centre, but performance doesn't seem to dip that much. And I think that's the only thing I can give you feedback from. And um, one driver that I think has stood out for me this year came uh, towards the uh, sort of third quarter. I didn't like the look of it, but I must admit, I can't knock the performance from it. It's been exceptional. And the most forgiving driver for me for this year would have to be, well, it's back to Callaway, I'm afraid. And it's the uh, big birth of the B21. This driver, like I said, when I first seen it, this elongated shape of uh, their head, not really my cup of tea, to be quite honest with you. Uh, but I couldn't ignore it once I tried it out on the fairway. And there was another story with this driver in particular that uh, really confused me in that I was sent it with a 45 gram shaft in, regular shaft to test, uh, was to swap it out, forgot to do it, played with the 45 gram sta uh, shaft, never missed a single fairway. And all of a sudden I was a bit uh, confused with uh, this shaft and how it performed. We then went to do some further testing and no matter what I tried, the 45 gram shaft still far outweighed anything else I could put in this thing. And I've got to admit, it's a draw bias club, but, oh my word. I wish we had a back camera on this and we can never see these, but that has absolutely ripped out there. It says it's draw bias and for me, you know, if I've got uh, an issue with my driving, it'll often be that sort of, uh, I can throw in a snap up quite easily. And uh, so the draw bias would be something not necessarily geared towards me, but what I will say is it's not done either. It's been, I've, for whatever reason, however I've delivered that club, we seem to be getting the ball out there fairly straight. Lewis Johnson who's on the channel, not been on for a while, we need to get Lewis back. Talked to him a few weeks ago and he did say it's the best performing driver he's seen in my hands in terms of 
everything it does in terms of ball flight, in terms of distance, in terms of consistency. And I've got to admit, it's, uh, it's not the most confident area of my game, but what I've found is, again, 45 gram shaft, maybe I just take my time a little bit with it, swing it nice and easy. The Big Bertha B21 driver launches plenty high enough. It does got plenty of help in there. And I've got to say, it's an absolute weapon and it's going to take some beating there's a lot of clubs coming in this next few weeks but for me the b21 is a fantastic driver and that's why it would be my most forgiving driver for any golfer from 2020. right that's me done one final message is always remember these kind of videos are very subjective this is my personal opinion and the important message is always always where possible Go and get custom fit at a specialist like 4Golf and make sure you're getting the very best product that suits your game. Right, that's it. First video of 21. Going to be a great year. We can't get any worse than the last one anyway. So uh, thanks for watching and I will see you all soon. Take care.